I was really interested in evolution. I went to a school where evolution was taught uh, in a, at a very scientific level. It was just sort of come on the scene. Uh, between that and the, and the emergence of genetic science, I thought there's something here that there's a way that we operate that's based on evolution that we're missing. And I started to incorporate it into my training as a marathoner and a triathlete. How did evolution allow for me, my body, to, to work itself to the point where it got really exhausted but then could grow stronger? In other words, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right? Hey, all you sexy people. You know, I just got some of the best mail. It's like presents in the mail. The bummer... I don't know if you guys did this, but a few years ago, I got rid of all my CDs and all my music like that because who needs to haul all that stuff around? And I had most of it on some computer that is somewhere that probably doesn't have a battery that works, and I sure didn't put it on an extended hard drive. So at any rate, all my print CDs are gone. And then I got on Amazon Prime. And then I spent $800. But the mail came, and how awesome. And how baller that prints. I mean, that you think Warner Brothers stole his name. They said, we own your name, and you can't use it anymore. And so we're going to go ahead and change the name to this unpronounceable symbol. And I'm going to become the artist formerly known as. And then he read it all his masters. And he, I mean, you talk about extreme ownership. You talk about really being down for yours, man. That dude, he was a symbol of greatness and hope. It's amazing, all the mentors that we have. Somebody asked me one time, they said, who are, who, who are the people that made the biggest difference in your life um, as far as mentors growing up? And some of the biggest differences, besides the people closest to me, were books or biographies that I'd read about people. And you look at people that, um, I was thinking about standards. And I started thinking about taking a stand. Now, most people in Prince's position would have just said, ah, well, I guess you can't do that. They're saying I can't own my name, so I'll just soldier on with the deal that I've got and make the best of it. But not Prince, man. It's like, he was a guy that there was no way he could see it that he wasn't going to circumvent this obstacle. And that's why I like Ganesh, the remover of obstacles. Because people either see things one way or another. They either see that this is a thing that there's no way they won't get around. They just have to figure out the puzzle. Or they might try a little bit and push a little bit against the wall and go, uh, I guess you just can't get over this wall. And, uh, I guess that's what this podcast is about, is primarily how to get over the wall. How do we get out of our own way? Where do I put my own obstacles up that prevent me from my own greatness? And reflecting about that and reflecting about standards, it's where do you take a stand? What do you value enough to take a stand? What are you willing to die for? I feel like there's a lot of things you need to be willing to die for in order to be maybe an honorable or useful or a person that's really about it. Anyway, I started thinking about Prince in that way, and it's pretty goddamn remarkable. And then you think a lot of musicians, man. You think about NWA and the stand that they took for freedom of speech. They were just some foul-mouthed kids. They didn't think that they were going to make a stand for the Freedom of Speech Act. And they did. And it made a goddamn difference. And then, you know, the biggest one, the most recent, is Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali's passing, I think, really quaked through a nation. I think that I, at my age, can't really understand it as much as maybe somebody that was 60 can understand it. Because those were pivotal times, like the 60s and 70s, uh, when he was at his height, those were pivotal times for America. And that was a, it was a whole different kind of party back then. And the stands that Muhammad Ali, um, Malcolm X, Dr. Martin Luther King, the stands that those guys were making were life and death. And a lot of guys, 
Um, and I, I hope I didn't offend any military friends when I, I put a picture up honoring Muhammad Ali on the day and, and you know, he had this tremendous quote about the Viet Cong had never assaulted him or put him down or tried to render him unequal to other men. And uh, what a huge thing that was. Because the fact is, is that he could have just gone along and easily, like, going to war, not a big deal for him. Like, he could have easily done that. Done his time, he would have probably been treated as a celebrity. (sighs) Much in the way like Elvis was, I suppose. I don't really know. I guess I don't know about what Elvis's time was there, if it was what it was. But at any rate, my point is, is that he allowed himself to be stripped of his title. The government took away his ability to make a living. Now you think about that. It took away his ability to make a living, took away his passport. He couldn't travel to fight. And he took a stand. And he, and he took a stand against the military industrial complex. And he really took a stand against what we should all be taking a stand against right now, which is why are we fighting wars that are only in the best interest of corporations and then allowing those corporations to become more powerful to more take over more of our lives. And it's clear that they don't have our best interest in mind. So Pirate Life Podcast. At any rate, I feel like I've gone on and on and belabored the topic a bit. Pirate Life Podcast has kind of started in that vein. And I've gotten to talk to some really fantastic people. And one of the beautiful things is I went to Paleo FX and I got to meet a whole community of like-minded, motivated people that are in this movement, that are in the movement and the conversation of health and growth and nutrition and how to pirate your life back. And one of the main people that has affected my life, I, I saw him speak live one time, is Mark Sisson. And Mark Sisson is our guest on the podcast today. You can find him at Mark's Daily Apple. Uh, He wrote The Primal Blueprint, which is a life-changing book. And you can do easily search. He's easily searchable. I think Chris Kresser's had him on his podcast. He's been all around. Uh, Rogan had him on his podcast. And he's a beautiful articulation and representation of humanity at an advanced age in life. And he's seen a lot, and he's lived through a lot, and he's looking at the best ways to live to have the best, most kick-ass life for as long as he can. And so he's also, in that event, he's made a whole line of condiments, of uh, nutritional uh, dressings, all these things without canola oil that are all sustainably sourced, good for the body, healthy, um, that are very good to use on a ketogenic diet. They will not spike your insulin. And he has a whole line of, he has a whole primal kitchen and they're going to make restaurants, thank goodness. And more and more of this movement's just getting more and more widespread. And I really see that Rob Wolf and Mark Sisson are at the spearhead of this in a lot of ways. And they take a lot of grief, I'm sure, too. But I really applaud their efforts and, and I hope you search them out. Follow them on uh, Snap, or not on Snapchat, probably, but follow them on Instagram and Twitter and you can find the Primal Blueprint, uh, Primal Kitchen, Mark Sisson's just under his name, and you can see all the things that they're up to, and it opens up a whole new conversation for you. So thank you for paying attention through all that. I'd like to get some ads out of the way as well. And I'd also like to go over a little bit about what Mark talks about. We go into TRT, we go into healthy fats, we go into the beginning of all this movement and, and kind of his background and expertise in it. And just what it what it's like for a man of his age to keep operating at a at a fulfilled and sustained um, pace, and he's an amazing dude. So, look forward to that. Also, all you in Texas, please check out Concrete Cowboy, Dallas, Austin, and Houston. Check out Caveman Coffee. This podcast and all podcasts are brought to you by Caveman Coffee. Looking for some really big things coming up shortly. And you can see us live. We'll be at Boston this weekend. And we'll be at Reebok One in Boston doing some collaboratory stuff with uh, Reebok Apparel and the whole Reebok brand and all of the CrossFit Games athletes will be out there. So there'll be some great podcasts coming out of that next week. In addition to that, you can find us at the CrossFit Games. I believe that we are 
cinched for doing that and we should be doing some really cool things up there so check us out kmancoffee.com kmancoffee co on instagram and twitter and find out all things caveman some new apparel coming out too uh should be live in the next couple weeks so at any rate that's all happening nuevo cerveza it's a little micro brew that a friend of mine do if you're into that check it out we just mixed a great amber and white gold so we did the white gold coffee bean and an amber beer and brewed that up we have a few kegs of it and we will be opening a tap room coffee house and mercantile shop called nuevo cerveza headquarters here in santa fe new mexico probably in the next six weeks or so and that'll be the only place that beer is available for now but if you're in the area stop in and holler and you can find us uh twitter and instagram just hit up nuevo cerveza Thank you very much. I want to also thank Original Nutritionals for all of my fish oil needs. On it.com. And I think that's it, you little freaks. Enjoy this. And in, I really, I mean, the most inspirational guy. We only spoke for a short time, 30, 40, 45 minutes. I'm not sure. He's gracious enough to spend time with us. But please, uh, seek out Mark. Tell him hello and tell him I sent you. God bless y'all. And I hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. A big Tate Fletcher. Powerful Tate Fletcher. Is a, is a real alpha male. Weightlifter. He's a stuntman. Movie star. Robust, enthusiastic individual. He's huge, by the way. He's like a monster person. One of the sweetest guys I know. He's bigger than life. Actor. Entrepreneur. A fighter. The jiu-jitsu technician. He's also bald and he has all these tattoos. He's just a big fucking man. Uh, a man, a myth, a legend. Tate, Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. What's up, Tate Fletcher, you, you bad that? motherfucker? Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher is Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Teddy Bear. Motherfucking Fletcher, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's Tate Fletcher, everybody. The great <laughs> Tate Fletcher. Tate the animal Fletcher. Tate the savage Fletcher. Always moving. There's no stillness with Tate Fletcher. You will find no dust. Tate Fletcher's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He just said the word erection. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher's in the fucking house. Tate Fletcher! Tate really blasts out some serious hardcore truth bombs, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Welcome, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is Pirate Life Radio, and I'm Tate Fletcher. And today, I'm super excited. We're here at Paleo Effects again for the final day, and um, and I've got the Mark Sisson, uh, founder of Everything Primal and the Primal <laughs> Blueprint, and uh, one of the first kind of. Uh, doctrines that i ascribe to you know the, the term biohackers become so um prevalent now and i'm like and now i gotta ask people i'm like what kind of biohacker are you are you the kind that wants to do nothing and get all the results yeah, maybe yeah. take a pill or are you the kind that is like steadily trying to get after it have kind of reached uh, all the top levels in your life and now you're trying to dial it in more and, and for me what you've represented i first heard you at cfla give a great lecture and and uh between you and, 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 and Rob, really, and trying both of those um, diets and going 100% into it, going, well, if you, you know, wh where do you want to go as an aging athlete? And where do you want to go also as, as a human? What's your conversation going to be? It kind of changed from I'm going on a diet to like, I just have a different relationship with food. And now I have different standards, I guess. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. And I have a, I think uh, I have a different relationship with life now. And it's really about um, finding those moments. Um, as, as frequently as possible where I can get the most amount of fulfillment, enjoyment, pleasure, uh, contentment, satisfaction as possible on, on a day-to-day -day basis, on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. And to the extent that food a has an effect on that, I, look, people sometimes go, well, paleo and primal, isn't that a very restrictive diet? I go, no, 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 man. I just, there's some things I choose not to eat, but there are so many awesome foods that I choose to eat. And by the way, I love to eat. And further, by the way, I will not put anything into my mouth that doesn't taste freaking awesome. Right. If it's not delicious, I'm not playing with it. That's, I mean, everybody's, I have a friend and he has type 2 diabetes he got when he was 58 or something. And I said, what if I told you that I could find you a way to eat that is just delicious and that would take away your need for insulin? He says, no, you know, I don't do drugs and I don't drink and, and it's the last kind of expression I have for, for my comfort and everything. I'm like, I love every meal I eat, bro. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a glutton, but I eat in a way that serves my body. And what I also never, you know, Keith and I had talked a lot about, about I never really thought that, that it would affect my mood. I had no idea until five, ten years ago that 
that, had a conversation with what my well-being as far as my mental processes and emotional balance was throughout the day. I mean, there's a whole realm of possibilities there with people who are taking prescription meds for depression or anxiety or any kind of mood disorder. And I'm not suggesting that all of them, you know, would, would, would be uh, eliminating their meds, but certainly a tremendous amount of them would probably be well served by, by eating the way you and I choose to eat. And, Absolutely. Uh, and it's, uh, again, it, you know, clarity of thought, um, uh, the consistency of energy throughout the day, so you don't have the blood sugar issues that drive the brain into a panic mode, and, you know, all these things. You don't, I mean, one of the great benefits of eating this way is when you become fat adapted, when you become keto and fat adapted, which happens as a matter of just eliminating uh, sugars and carbs and stuff from your diet. Uh, and, and within a couple of days. Within a couple of days. Uh, and w when that adaptation happens and you understand that you're now burning fat that's on your body, no offense to anyone in the audience, but you got fat on your body that you can burn. Sure. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Um, once you're able to tap into those energy stores, you don't need to eat three square meals a day. If you do, great. If you choose to, great. But you don't need to. And so you're not driven by hunger all the time. You know, as, sh as we call the sh these sugar burners who are, you know, have not become fat adapted, and most of the world, I think, is, is reliant on carbohydrates and sugar, you get to this point where the sh blood sugar goes up, and then it drops, and then you're hungry again, and it's this constant battle. You're, you're of, a slave to food. You're a slave to food, and you're a slave to your appetite. So the most empowering thing about the Primal Blueprint is this release from attachment to appetite and hunger. You know, you eat enough, and then you push the food away, and you go, Hey, I'm not even. I'm not really hungry for the next bite. Right. I know there's food available if I want it, but for right now, I am totally satisfied. The thing I love the most about it, also, that I people say, well, how do you get through grueling workouts and this and that? I'm like, it's not even part of my conversation. I don't feel ravenous afterwards. I don't, and I don't get because uh, uh, you know I used to get a little hypoglycemic in the midst of a workout. Um, and we would have to drink Gatorade, or we drank drink this thing called Endurox. Like during he, the workout, you got a bottle of yeah, yeah. sugar, yeah, yeah. 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 fizzed Coke in the old <laughs> day. And and so you know that became a, a thing. And and now I'm like I, I don't I can do a couple work. It doesn't even bother me to eat or not eat if I if I'm fat adapted. Like when I'm in that state, I'm good. I mean, I go into a I, I wake up in the morning. I have a cup of coffee, caveman coffee, by the way. Just, do you, you know, really? I do. That's yeah, awesome. I got a I get big bag. I love that. Um, and I. I have, um, I confess, I put a little bit of sugar in it uh -huh. and some cream. Um, and I'm good to go until 1 o'clock. Do you care about what kind of sugar that you use? I don't care. It's so little. It's so insignificant. Turbinado, cane, no, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter It doesn't matter to me. What do you think about the stuff with uh, coconut sugars? I've been it's seeing fine. that a lot. It's fine. And, and people... Um, but as far as a glycemic index, is that a, is that a similar response on the insulin or no? Is that... Well, now we can tell. I, I think no. I don't think that. I, I think there's no difference really at that point. And and really, then it becomes a matter of quantity, not not quality. Right. That, right. So a little how, bit. How many of, carbs do you allow yourself a day? How many carbs? I mean, 120. Yeah, I go about 100. Yeah, I mean, and it's all from vegetables and that one. That and one a little bit of sugar. Of sugar. Yeah. That's yeah. what I always but look at. I go, yeah. okay, this will be my thing today then. Yeah. And then I'll stay yeah, yeah, with yeah. fats or whatever. Yeah. But the point is, like, so I wake up, I have the coffee, um, and I'm, I'm good to go until about 1 o'clock, which includes breaking uh, at about 9.30 or 10, going to the gym, doing a workout. Sometimes it's an easy one. Sometimes it's a hard one. If it's a hard one, I, you know, I slog through it. But I, I don't feel like I have to have a pre-workout meal. I'm definitely not compelled to have a post-workout meal. It's interesting how you, when you get to that space where you're burning fat, you finish a hard workout, and, and hunger is like the last thing on your yeah, mind. Right. It's and, true. And, and so it, hunger normally uh, it creeps up about 12.30 or 1.00. You know what's amazing about hunger, too, is that, that you're not... You're in a state of dissatisfaction when when you're hung and when you say that I didn't I wasn't present to it till you just mentioned it but I feel so uh, so sated at the end of a workout like that and I, I'm not longing for that oh I need now I need food like you just get to have these pleasant moments then that you can enjoy as opposed to chasing the next thing in that's, a way that's exactly right that's yeah. exactly right I mean I say if you're not hungry then really why do you need to eat right. And well, and then there used to be this thing where, well, you got to get in, um, 
so many like 0.75 grams of protein <laughs> per, and all that and I'm like that is some hooey why was I believing all those magazines I read yeah. like that just it's just not I'm, I'm big as anything and I don't eat a ton well, you of protein know, so there's, there's a couple of schools of thought and like I say often there's no right or wrong answers here they're just choices I'm not going to judge your choice um, but if you're interested in finding out more about the science I'm going to maybe help you make some choices for you that might work well so one of the choices in the old days was you do a post-workout meal you've got this theoretical window of opportunity where you yep. resynthesize glycogen for 45 minutes after a workout, hence the, the, um, the reloading drinks and gels and things that people would take immediately after a workout, the post-workout meal. The window. To, the window My of window opportunity. window's closing. I yeah, gotta yeah, yeah. get it. But, but what happens, that's great, if, and that's really good, by the way, if you're gonna do a glycolytic workout the next day. Dude, I don't like to work out hard every day. I like to work out the least, the least amount to get the most amount of of benefit. What's hard for you? Uh, I mean, when, when I say that, I mean, because when I think about a hard workout for yep. me, a lot of times I'm thinking of the most arduous are if we're going to go into 20 or 30 minutes. I don't do that, but maybe once every couple weeks or even once a month now. I'm yep. not, I mean, and what I mean is a hard Metcon type yeah, yeah. thing. I'll work out for longer than that, but I'm if I'm going to go well, exactly. and go after the thing, okay. it's 12 minutes or something or eight minutes. Yep. I mean, is that? That's what I'm talking about. So, so at the end of that workout, um, if again, if you're going to do it again the next day, then it makes sense to re maybe resynthesize glycogen as quickly as you can. But who the hell has the energy and the time and you know get a life if you goes back if, to uh, goals? It, what are your goals? It, it, what are your goals? Yeah. And if your goal is to be in the gym and just you know crushing yourself every day, right. God bless you and have 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 a blast. But I'm more into. Again, what's the least amount of pain, suffering, sacrifice, and discipline I can manage and get the most amount of benefits, right? So anyway, so that glycogen window, that's the reason for the old post-workout meal. And it was particularly uh, apropos if you were an endurance athlete and you had to go out and do this every single day. Well, the other way to look at this is after a workout, that's when your body is, is, is pulsing that testosterone and growth hormone. And that's what I want. That's what yes. I want to, for my workouts. And the difference is that if I take a high carbohydrate meal after a workout, that blunts that that testosterone and growth hormone experience. That so, changed my life when you said that. that I've, I've adopted that since then, and I, yeah. and I and I and I and that's the only thing I say to people. I go, this may work, but if we've been doing that window thing for a long time, how about try this? Because the other thing that food does besides nourishing the muscle is it robs you of any kind of uh, hormonal spurt that you're going to yep. get that yep. you're doing the compound exercises for. Exactly. What about yeah. like dropping amino acids right after your workout or something like that? You know, it's it's fine. Um, you know, if you want to do some branch chain aminos yeah, or something, yeah. that's good. But you know, too many, too much of the of a, like a whey protein isolate or something that's got a full complement of amino acids, yeah. that's going to raise insulin as well, and that's going to give you the same effect. So, uh, we, we have to go back to this suspension of disbelief that we have our whole life. Uh, you know, we're all sitting around a table here. We're all old enough to have remembered back in the 70s and 80s when the mantra was, do not ever go hungry because you will cannibalize muscle tissue. Right. Well, all of that was based on a paradigm that meant you were burning sugar all the time. Yeah. And it really wasn't into the fat burning paradigm. Now that you've become a fat burner, all this stuff changes. Now when you become a fat burner and your body can access stored fat when you don't eat and after you've worked out, then the brain is no longer going, oh my God, we're gonna die, we better shoot some cortisol out to create right. more sugar, to tear down muscle tissue, to send those aminos to the to the liver, to make more sugar, to fuel the muscles. It's just bizarre. That's a different conversation. It's totally just a different, different conversation. conversation. And yet that was, that was the paradigm for decades and decades. It's all changed now with fat adaptation. With fat adaptation, <clears throat> you don't need to have that post-workout meal. You will not cannibalize muscle tissue. Again, the worst that'll happen is that you'll have run through all of your glycogen reserves, which is actually a good thing because you want that, that variability. You want to squeeze all the glycogen out and then let it refill normally. That maintains insulin sensitivity, right? So that's, that's, Interesting. One, that's, that's one of the ways we maintain insulin sensitivity is by doing that. heavy lifting. Absolutely. So, you know, think of the, think of the sugar right. going out of the muscles and then being being driven back into the muscles because insulin is doing its job so well. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, so that night after your, your high-intensity workout, now are you going to have more carbohydrates with your meal that night? 
you know, if if Keith, if I don't if I don't plan on going hard the next day, yeah. I have the faith that my my glycogen reserves are going to refill on their Believe own. Believe your body, yeah. trust yeah. your body. Just, yeah. they'll do it. It just yeah. won't happen overnight. It might take two or three days. Gotcha. But I don't plan on going hard for a couple of days. Look, yeah, I'm yeah. 63, man. <laughs> I'm going to hurt for a day after that hard workout. You know, they call you the Silver Fox. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. Do you know that? <laughs> handsome. He's. I mean, for those that don't know, oh, just I'm go ahead and Google. Because there's a Pat handsome song here. Hey, I'll, I'll turn you blush right now. Like when I talk to people all the time. Like um, 63, my dad's 60 um, something. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, we're talking about workout stuff. I always I, I, let me Google this picture right here. Oh, uh -oh. you're guy. the go-to for I, I've actually go used your picture for some other high celebrity clients that I work with, and uh -oh. I'm like, okay, you want to talk about like not being able to get there? Oh, here really? You you're 52. Look at here this guy. Yeah. 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 Well, show I'll, me your marathon runner that you look up to, and I'll, I'll show, I'll show exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and what do you what do you think as far as hormone response when we talk about that? And now also here. Uh, big in this conversation is is TRT and now yeah. steroids are becoming a, a big uh, discussion in in sport like yeah. in, in yeah. the sport Keith and I left for sure and um, there's a lot of people that have variant views and I'm wondering what your views are on all those things you know yeah so first of all my view is it's it, is that we should use science to benefit our lives to gotcha. whatever extent we can okay now sometimes science works in our favor and sometimes it may not be appropriate um, I was involved in the anti-doping uh, movement uh, with the IOC for 15 years. I drafted the anti-doping rules for the sport of triathlon and I administered those rules for 12 years. I saw it, I heard every um, positive test that ever occurred in, in the sport of triathlon. I was so immersed in performance enhancing drugs. Now it was ironic to me that that a lot of these like testosterone was was it was ironic in some sense that it was banned because a lot of these these sports that I was involved with, cycling, running, triathlon, are so depleting of testosterone that you're literally killing the guy who's training. Yeah. Uh, so it's in in some cases to deny the very medicines that yeah. you would give any other poor soul who showed up at the emergency room saying, "I feel like crap because I overtrained or I overworked," and think nothing of prescribing it. Now you're denying them. It's so that's a whole different topic so but having said that um, so in terms of some of these anabolic steroids I got a real problem with those okay those are uh, you know if you uh, the THG that was the whole Balco thing that's the stuff of, they call the clear right the clear that was you know that was uh, an attempt to get around the testing laws and it caused uh, some people a world of hurt not just legally but physically right um, on the other hand um, I, I've been doing TRT myself I've been doing testosterone replacement for the last two years. Um, I do a small amount. Um, I've got an anti-aging doc. I've, I've looked at all the research. Yeah. So I'm gonna take advantage of the science to the extent that I see it. Are you doing a cream? I'm, no, I'm doing an injection. Oh, cool. Yeah. And cool. now, yeah. what, what's a small amount and how often do you check blood levels then? Yeah, and all that. You leave that so at the I, discretion of your doctor? Yeah, I leave it to the discretion of my doctor. I've checked my blood levels you know, twice a year. Um, they're fine, my hematocrit is normal. Uh, you know, my it's really about free testosterone in this case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now, what, what do you think? I was just on a, a Dr. Drew's show with Adam Carolla, and, and Dr. Drew was talking about he'd like to do it, but he's not sure if the science is there. And I'm like, there's a ton. I mean, the science is, is that you're dying and yeah. that this stuff goes down. And if you can have it go up and feel better till you die, that's better. And he said, well, I had he had prostate cancer five years ago. Yeah. And he says, I just don't want to aggravate anything. I want to get clear of that. Do you know anything between? Because that's the only downside that I've ever really seen that has any plausible. You know, well, it's interesting. I agree, and but what's interesting is some of the research on prostate cancer says that that men who have low testosterone have a higher incidence of prostate cancer. Than, interesting. Than, the, than, than a, a, norm, a more normal population. But to your point, um, like I would not do growth hormone because I'm I'm afraid of growth hormone because right? that grows too much. Because that yeah, for a yeah. lot of reasons. Yeah. yeah. Um, and unless you know, I was clinically deficient in it, and I tried everything else, and I I had a you know. Um, uh, issues with, with a combination of libido and weight gain and skin and energy and all of the other, you know, all those other uh, things. So but you can test that and you can, you know, right. uh, it can be, it can be prescribed by certain anti-aging docs. But so I'm, I'm not advocating for or against, but I am saying that in my case, look, I'm a, I like to, 
you know, you call me a biohacker. I'm not sure I like that. I don't call you that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, no, I yeah, feel yeah. like that's a weird yeah, thing. It, I mean, that's yeah. the thing that is that. Yeah. That's like, it's like To me, it's like fitness model. It's yeah. like, but you were fit, and now you're on Instagram. Stop it. That's yeah, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're, you're trying to make your... So, I was saying right. that there's two biohackers that are here. Yeah. There's the kind that are actually high operating humans that yeah. are like trying to get little edges and get better in their life. And then there's those that are like, yeah. I'd like to do nothing and take a pill and be awesome. How yeah, can yeah. I do that? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and to that end, um, you know, I, I, I would I never play, call you that. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, uh, I, I play ultimate Frisbee once a week with 20 somethings. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be 63 in a month. So dude, I mean, for me right. to keep up on a sprint to the end zone and defend a long bomb pass, um, you know, I, I need to, to have all of the, you know, the edge I can get, much of which, most of which comes from my training. So yeah. I spend time in the gym. My time in the gym is contemplated to keep me healthy and to not get injured when I'm playing. Yeah. Right? And the combination of the two is good. So I limit the amount of time in the gym. Um, I eat well. I take great care of myself otherwise, so I don't depend on, on TRT. It's yeah. just something I've been... You know, experimenting with, because I am an experimenter in that regard. And, you know, so far so good. And I've read the research, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not compelled to discontinue. Can, can I ask you, because um, you mentioned free testosterone, are you doing anything like, like in your diet or, or, or anything that, that'll, that'll keep that testosterone? Oh, yeah, yeah. Getting... I mean, everything about, the, uh, about a well-planned primal blueprint or yeah. paleo diet, um, you know, it's high in healthy fats, which, is, which are... Um, protective of testosterone levels. Um, it's and and uh, conversely are going to reduce um, any sort of estrogenic effect. Um, I cut the sugars and the in, in the inflammation, which you know the, yeah, the yeah. inflammatory products, so the omega three fatty acids and all of the industrial seed oils, the sugars. Uh, I cut grains out. Uh, I think uh, for me, grains have, the elimination of grains has, was life changing. And, and all those things combine cool. to give my body that that opportunity that. That terrain in which to to manifest the strongest, healthiest, leanest old guy uh, it can possibly do. I think the only hard part when people talk about the how hard the diet is is it comes into planning and and forethought. You just have to be like to be saying I'm not going to have any grains. Yeah. All you have to think, well, I'm going to bring some coconut butter with me along for the ride, or I'm going to bring you know, something you, to you, sate me. You know, when you start in this arena, Starting, yeah. it's hard unless you plan. Unless you, you know. Like I tell people, don't let yourself ever go hungry because you'll go off the rails. Exactly so have right. some coconut butter around, have some nut butters. Those are know, my saviors. Have some beef, beef jerky yeah. or whatever. I mean, I think there's nothing like a spoonful of coconut butter yep. um, to to sort of take the edge off and to get you to the next meal, wherever that is, or the next source of real food. Um, it saved a, me. Yeah. When, I mean, when I heard you speak at CFLA, Lacey yeah. and I were there, yeah. Yeah. and uh, that that say uh, you're like, go ahead and have two tablespoons of coconut butter and yeah. tell me about how hungry you are or whatever. I go, yeah. well, I'll try that. And I was like, oh my god, this it, yeah. and it was it's life altering, yeah. you know. And it yeah, makes it an easy now, transition. You know, you can, when we look, we can call that a hack. I don't want to. I don't whatever, wanna, whatever. But, but, you know, but it's, give it a name. Yeah, but it's but it really works. And but those are the little secrets. Those are the little things that we do to make this transition painless. Uh, where it otherwise would be some large struggle suffering, oh, I don't ever get to get a, eat another Cinnabon, my life is over. No, just find, you know, like my, like people say, what do you want for dessert? Well, I'll have another lamb chop, please. Right? <laughs> exactly right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, ate all the entrees. Yeah. yeah, Lacey would travel a lot for work as well, and, and so her kit to go is just, it's unbelievable, but it's very well thought out, and, yeah. and you yeah. have to be conscious about it. And, you know, and I'm not, I'm not so militant about this, lifestyle that I like on a bet I could go to any restaurant in this town and find a meal I'll eat that would Denny's serve and me it's well. fine. Yeah. 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 I mean I won't if I don't have to, but if I'm no, with, but you, know. you won't get the pancakes, right. I presume, <laughs> and you won't get the French toast. I'll just but, go with the eggs and bacon, the eggs I'm and good. Bacon and then yeah. You know, and every, we're in we're in Austin right now where everybody's got guacamole. Dude, carne, carne asada and guacamole Oh, any Mexican with a little, restaurant, with a, I am with, good. With a yeah. little bit of sour cream is awesome, and yet so many people think because they're paleo, I could never go to a Mexican restaurant because it's got tortillas and beans and rice and it's all this other so stuff. so much meat, great yeah. meat, yeah. usually marinated in awesome sauces. Yeah. The reason peppers. I can't go there is because I'll the eat queso. all the corn yeah. chips because I love tortilla chips and guacamole. And the queso. <laughs> yeah, okay. so, so that's, but that's another thing. But, that's, okay? but, but, that, but, but, so but I don't, don't live religiously. Don't sit, and, and don't set yourself up for failure, right? So if, you, right. if that's going to be an issue for you, Stay away from those places for a while. Yeah. Well, On the other or, hand, once or, you once once you get to where you are, say, you know what? Damn it! Today I'm going to have some chips. Exactly. And I'm going to enjoy the hell out of them. 
and then I'm not going to have any for a couple of days. Or I plan, yeah. and I go, well, today I'm only going to have meat and cheeses throughout the day, and yep. then I'll go ahead and I'll have uh, popcorn tonight at the movie theater because it's got 100 grams of carbohydrates in it, and that'll be that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'll I'll I plan it like that. Movie. Sure. It'll be great. By the yeah. way, we have this new bottle of avocado oil, and a lot of people are yeah. cooking, That's it. They're cooking their popcorn in avocado oil. Oh, my wow. God. You know, yeah. I got a friend, and he would he would save his bacon grease, yeah. and then oh, he would put better, it in the yeah. freezer, and then yeah. he would cook in a, in a, in a pot, yeah. you know, yeah. And oh my God, yeah. yeah. But so, I, I know you're you're, you're caught for time. Yeah. I want to talk about your products, and I, I also I've got two questions, and, and I want to go into your products and have people know where they can find them because now I'm fucked up. When I go to Whole Foods, and I used to just go and get chicken salad or tuna salad, I'm like, and then I start looking, I'm like, oh, there's sugar and the goddamn everything. How dare you and your canola oil? But. Your, yours is one of the only ones on the shelf, I think, that it's has no delicious. sugar. I don't know See, that, that there's another is, one. No, that's that's a, I dream no, about uh, the mayo. You know, we've got a big issue with canola, and we're having we're having serious discussions with a lot of these health food stores who have a lot of products that have canola in them. Yep. So, uh, basically, uh, in our estimation, avocado oil is the healthiest of all the oils. It's even there above, you know, coconut oil, and it's above uh, wow. extra virgin olive oil. Uh, so, so, there's a lot of good research on it. The fatty acid profile is spectacular. So, we said, well, how can we make foods using avocado oil and the first food that we were able to make commercially to fit our specs was this was this uh, avocado oil based mayo thank and god for that and yeah, it's, it's goddamn so delicious no, it's, 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 look, it's the holy grail of condiments here it's what yep. the paleo community has it been like really missing and craving I've been, anything. Anything. I've been trying to think make my own long, for so long for the longest time you couldn't make chicken salad you couldn't make tuna yeah. salad you couldn't make potato by the way potato salad now because of the resistant starch thing yeah, cold yeah, potatoes yeah. are back on the menu but you couldn't make <laughs> potato salad because you couldn't find a mayonnaise unless you were willing to make it yourself. Right. God bless you. Uh, so we got this. So this avocado oil-based mayonnaise came out, and it is blowing up. We're number number one uh, best-selling mayonnaise on Amazon for the last six months, every day. Uh, we're in all Whole Foods. We're on ThriveMarket.com. I don't know if your listeners go to Thrive. Yeah. Um, we sell it at our own at PrimalBlueprint.com. But now we have a Chipotle lime flavored mayo. Got it. Yeah. It's and it's, it's spectacular. It's and your dressings and also. Dressings, so that's yeah, the other yeah, thing. Yeah. A little mayo yeah. and then that that the, put the dressing in it. Mix that with your tuna. Oh my God! And yeah. then I just cut up an onion. Yeah. Throw it in there. I'm great. Yeah. So a whole new realm of opportunity of a new world of food has opened up to the paleo community and the clean eating community because of this mayonnaise. What was the onset of your interest in this conversation? 20 Dude, years ago, 100 years ago, when, when did you start? Thinking about what, the, the food or, or just? About, about the food and about a way of life. And I mean, well, the way of life, look, I was a bio major in college, I was pre-med. I was really interested in evolution. I went to a school where evolution was taught uh, at, a, at a very scientific level. It was just sort of come on the scene. Uh, between that and the, and the emergence of genetic science, I thought there's something here that there's a way that we operate that's based on evolution that we're missing. And I started to incorporate it into my training as a marathoner and a triathlete. How did evolution allow for me, my body, to, to work itself to the point where it got really exhausted but then could grow stronger? In other words, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, Certainly. right? So that was, that was the basis for my performance um, interest. And then I was always looking at foods and how I could enhance performance legally with foods. And it sort of segued over the years and became this life way of, of um, ideal fueling sources, ideal ways to build muscle and, and, and burn fat. And it eventually, about 15 years ago, kind of gelled and became this life way that is the primal blueprint. I saw that, that diet was huge. I saw that how you chose to exercise dictated what your body looked like. And I'm the best manifestation of that that I know. When I was a marathon runner, I weighed 138 pounds. I weigh 172 now. I had the same body fat I did then. I haven't run a mile for 14 years. God bless you. I just do sprints and weights. That's all and, I do. You know what I mean? And and if I do hike, I hike. I do some aerobic stuff. I ride a bike a little bit, but I'm not cannibalizing my body every single day. I'm not choosing to direct the genes to express themselves as a lean, skinny uh, marathoner. I'm choosing my genes to reinvent myself as a powerful, lean sprinter. Yeah. What's cool about that too is like the, the idea that right now. If for some reason you had to go run a marathon, you'll be able to go run a marathon. You'll probably get sore afterwards, but... but yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, and I wouldn't win the damn thing, but, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I, but I know what it's like and I could complete it. And my, my training is, is, it's like when you look at the Kung Bushmen, you know, or these tr African tribes and you watch the video of them hunting, you know, the, the beast on the plains and they're, they're running for five hours in the hot desert sun. Well... Dude, they don't train for that. Right. That's how they live. They're just hungry yeah. they're and they're getting after it. <laughs> and they live their lives on a daily basis cross-training. 
yeah. right? They're lifting heavy yeah. things. They're Isn't walking around. Too? Like I choose, like I could eat the bush here, yep. or I'm going to run down an animal until he overheats to the point where he drops. I'm going to run you to exhaustion, and then I'm going to kill and eat you. That's a savage. That's that badass. Is, that, is that, badass. That, that is. Yeah. That is. It's no more primal than that. Absolutely. But um, that guy's probably not like killing himself running though. Like he's not going to be. He, his heart rate's not up to 150. Probably running out time. He's no, keeping it, it real that's slow. That's exactly and steady, right. Yeah. So they have an intuitive governor on their engine yeah. that says, "Look, in the event that we don't catch this beast, we're screwed." Yeah. So, uh, you know. Right. So, so a we either catch him or b if we don't catch him, we still have to survive to the next opportunity. Right. Yeah. And that's but that we're, look back to our earlier discussion here. We evolved um, energy mechanisms to allow us to tap into fat stores in the event that we don't catch the beast, uh, and to live on those fat stores for days at a time, and use ketones to maintain our mood and our energy levels yeah. and fuel our brain in a positive way so that we can have another go at it. So that's Crazy to think question. about it, like like we're, we let we let our body just get lazy and 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 and, and get that sugar well, we, for we, energy we seek, and we like, seek comfort instead of craving yeah, a yeah. stress. We have this whole energy us. source that we're yeah. made to tap into, but we're not doing it. We're not adapted to do that. It's crazy that, that we went that way. We don't even think it's possible. That's the thing about the Bushmen. I bet they catch more than they don't catch because they already know. They're like, this is going to happen. He is going to overheat. Yeah, it's going to happen in four hours or six hours. Yeah, but it's still going to happen. We, we're, yeah. we're so, and I'm already in it. I'm yeah. not going to be able to run like this again six hours from now. So I better just keep after it. And they probably run with a smile knowing that they're going to have a result. You mentioned ketones. And I wanted to ask you this too because I'm only just new with exogenous ketones. I, I mean, I don't know any, but Keith gave me some. Um, but I've been messing with <laughs> ketogenic stuff for like the last four, four, four or five years. And, uh, and I was like, what is all this? And like, I've got a lot of friends that get into stuff newly and they're like, here's the, here's the thing. Like, like Rogan got into... A ketogenic diet recently and now he's all about ketones and, and all that kind of stuff right yeah. he's all and so uh i'm like that was you're a great tired podcast, and you're, I, I go you're late to the game you know or whatever and i'm like why do you need this if you're i mean i'm I, it takes me two days to get keto adapted yeah and like what do you what, what i don't understand what this is for so is this is this another quote biohack so you can cheat the system you go i'm gonna eat all the french fries then i'll just drink these ketones and i'll be fine or or do they have a value and what is that value yeah, so they have a value and that's a perfect but, but the example you gave is like the way the world works it's like how can i get my shortcut right. literally how can i have my cake and eat it too um, well, so there's there's utility to some of these ketone esters and ketone salts. Uh, I tried some before a, a frisbee game a couple weeks ago. They taste great. Yeah, <laughs> or not. <laughs> uh, and uh, no, that's the biggest issue with these is is getting them. You have to put some nasty stuff in them to make them taste great. Otherwise, you'll hurl. Yeah, I, oh, I drink I drink the stuff that tastes horrible. Yeah, okay. And Keith was like, text me when you're yeah, when yeah. you get. And I, and I, I, he didn't oh, tell me that yeah. he didn't prepare. No, me. no, no. But anyway, so so the point was, I went in to, uh, again. I, I went into the game fast. That I played for two hours in the in the hot sun, uh, energy. I think there's something there, but I'm keto adapted. I'm fat adapted. I did all the work to get there right. to where these become a supplemental form of ketones. Got you. If you're just going to take and have a, a, some French toast for breakfast and then drink a ketone package, you're not going to you're not going to build the metabolic machinery that can burn those right. ketones. But, and that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about creating a need within the body to use that fuel. And that's where the that's where the interne uh, the intermittent fasting comes in. That's where the reduction of carbohydrates comes in to, to force your body to become good at burning fat, Makes sense. and then to make ketones, and then to build the, the mitochondrial machinery to burn the ketones. If you don't have that machinery, look, people who or are, who are sugar burners and who like go to bed one night and then don't eat until they, they might go on a fast until like dinner the next day. Their breath smells pretty bad. Yeah, they're in ketosis. They're sugar burners, and they're not fat burners, but they're in ketosis because that's what the body does. But they haven't built the metabolic machinery to burn the ketones, so they expel it in the breath, the urine, uh, the sweat, yeah. and they, they're not using the the actual fuel that their body's building, right? So that's the danger of, I think, uh, a, a, a average person who hasn't really done the work to become fat adapted using these ketone products. I don't think that it's appropriate and probably not even possible or uh, or beneficial to kind of 
um, you know, just drink a, a potion and try to think that you're in. in you some really sort need of, to stay true to the game. I think so. And and, and I think also, if if you're not and if you use exogenous ketones in the event that there is a short, in, in that you're thinking that there's a shortcut, you're doing yourself a disservice because uh, the emotional stability, all these other things that that are beneficial of being in ketosis, I don't think are available to you in yeah. the same now way. Now the science is just uh, just starting to come down the. The pipeline now. So if there's a keto guy out there who says, uh, you know, Mark, you're totally wrong. I think you're way off base. And, and send me, send me some research. And sure, I'll, I'm open to. Well, it. that's what I love about yeah. you and Rob. Both are you so open to whatever? You're like, uh, we're not trying to make this crazy. Let's yeah. just go ahead and have a good time and live a better life. That's all we're trying to do here. Exactly. And if you love the way you're living, yeah, awesome. I don't care if you eat primal or not. Yeah, yeah cool. But uh, 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 again, tell people where they can find you, and uh, we'll get you out of here. Hey, all right, Mark. Yeah, Keith. I'll say one thing before you get into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, just want to say a thank you, man. Like with K man here, we got to research a lot of stuff, and when you, when you're going down this path of of how to eat primal, you, there's a lot of things out there. And my my go to thing when I'm at home on the internet is um, um, so you talking about canola oil earlier. I'll Google canola oil and start typing in marks, and, and maybe I'll get to the D and da Daily Apple comes right up, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he sees all, all the research you have yeah. on your website. Thank and you. So, yeah. And so, I guess I want to I want to say thank you because yeah. without without you for sure and, and I, I feel really strongly about uh, honoring my mentors and 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 people that have helped along the road and and you're one of those guys I mean you're you're the first conversation I ever heard you had you're fundamental in uh, forming my outlook when I when I thought I knew something about something and then h here's a whole new mind blown here's how to open your life in a different way and and I don't think we'd be sitting here with Caveman Coffee the, the, the yeah, three of us after that if, conversation. if you and you and Rob had and, um, opened yeah. our, our lives, our hearts, our minds, and, and our expressions into this life in this way. And, and I really appreciate you, man. Sure. No, Thank likewise, you. appreciate that, brother. And I, and I, and I dig what you're doing. Uh, keep up the great work. I love seeing people who are embodying the lifestyle in a in a commerce application. Sure. Um, and they, you know, changing the world with what you do. I, I think that's what it is. You got to yeah. have commerce to be able to spread the yeah. word and and advertise. But like our goal is, we never wanted a business. We we wanted to empower people around us, and, yeah. and this just became the expression of that. And and it's not even really about coffee in that way. You know what I mean? Totally. So uh, Coffee's a metaphor for life. Pal. Sure. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. But wait, where can you find? Oh yeah. Into that. Well, oh yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Where can we find you? Uh, MarksDailyApple.com is a blog. PrimalBlueprint.com is our commerce site, e-commerce site, where you can buy the mayonnaise, the books, uh, the events. We have a, a Primal Health Coach program we just launched. Cool. Um, yeah. And I can send queries to the to the website or something like that. There's a, a link on yeah, there. People have questions, yeah. and there's yeah. a forum, and there's, like, Mark's Daily Apple is replete yes. with all, all kinds of great podcast. information. Really yeah. fun podcast. So. Killer, yeah, and yeah. search out uh, Mark on iTunes. He's got a great podcast out too. So. Thanks. All right. Or the man. Powerful.